This week on the Uncommon Ramen Channel, your hero will throw his hat into the ring and follow recipe to honor the very special ramen shop in Tokyo. Vicente and his master, Ueda Masamoto, is the subject of an amazingly quaint and nostalgic documentary called Come Back Anytime. The film is as simple and straightforward as the ramen feature. More amazingly, the film highlights a one generation ramen shop which focuses more on community than obsession over ramen. Hey guys, Jay with the Uncommon Ramen Channel. There's this thing called the Just One Cookbook Challenge. They've got a ramen contest. Let's win it. JustOneCookbook.com has never been a destination for me, but it's often been a landing site for me for my many, many, many searches for Japanese food like ramen, sukumen, sushi, and so forth. This recipe starts off with just pork bones and aromatics. All right, and I got the pork belly wrapped. Check this out. Let's see how the broth's doing. It's pretty murky. Hope this works. Now, guys, I want to teach you the joy of skimming. When it out, just keep skimming, just keep skimming. Let's, let's get our skimmer. This guy. And this is just the early scum. A whole lot more is coming. Trust me. We use some funky bones. But we've got boiling broth that we need. So we're gonna add in our pork chashu. The recipe called for two, I did three because I'm extra. Overall, this is not a very complicated ramen recipe. Um, at least compared to some of the ones I've done. I mean, there's no uh, aroma oil to speak of. There's no building of umami in the sense that you're starting off with a kombu dashi or anything like that. You're just boiling pork bones, doing your chashu in the soup. You're gonna take two cups of that soup and then make the tare, which is gonna be the soup, plus some soy sauce, plus some mirin, plus some sake, and some salt. Simple. It's supposed to be like home cooking in Japan. It's supposed to be nostalgic, evoking home cooked meals. Mom's cooking. Hey, let's check out the scum situation, shall we? Oh yeah, still some scum. Just keep skimming, just keep skimming. While I had a few minutes, I also did this other one. I'm gonna do this one sous vide like I normally do. Watch me. Guys, we're about one and a half hours into our initial cook. It's going pretty hard, look. You can pretty well see that the uh, water level is reduced a good bit. We're gonna fix up that in just a little while. Uh, but at the stroke of midnight, I'm going to be taking out some of the stock and making the tare. And I'll be adding some soy sake mirin, as well as some aromatics. getting late. It is now two, uh, 10 minutes before the two hour mark and we're gonna get ourselves uh, two cups of the simmering broth. Let's look at it right now. We're gonna get two cups of that reserve that for our tare. Two cups. You can see that's already pretty, pretty full body. All right, we got our two cups. I'm gonna add back a little bit of water we left. Cup sake. Cup mirin. All right, at the two hour mark, you can add your Tokyo Negi into the pot, as well as your 3.5 ounces of chicken fat, which I have. 
This is some rendered chicken fat from some chicken skins. All right, so we've reached the two hour mark, which basically means we've got our chashu tare. It's the chashu sauce as well as the seasoning tare for the whole soup and our ramen pot going at full blast for another hour. So not much to do. Drink some sake, I don't know. All right guys, it is late. We are at the three hour mark. Let's take a look at the soup. Ooh, look at that. Some of it's evaporated, but it's time to transfer the pork from the soup and go into the tare. Very gently. I'm done cooking ramen for day one. So this has been fun. I've got a big pot of stock. I've got my pork chashu in tare. It's pretty late. Um, probably just gonna let that steep. Probably just gonna, gonna let the broth go overnight until I wake up, probably at seven o'clock. I think I'm done for the night. Good morning. So it is the next day and our broth pretty much went on low until about five o'clock in the morning. Let's take a look at it. Yep, looks pretty brothy. Nice layer of film and scum on the top. We're gonna straighten that out today. The chashu, I just kind of left it in the tare overnight. It went to cool, which is actually really good because uh, when meat cools in the tare, it kind of relaxes and soaks up its fluid. So that stuff is gonna be really well seasoned. I'm really looking forward to it. Right now I'm bringing it to low and letting that go for two more hours because the total cook time for the chashu is supposed to be three hours on hard and then two to three hours on a low simmer in the tare. I'm gonna start straining this broth. Oh no. Tasted that little piece of pork that fell out of the tare. It's salty. Mm, it's gonna be good. Alright, cool. So, tare is strained, and I'm gonna throw that into the fridge so that it can solidify up. It's a little hot. I'm gonna put that in the fridge so that the uh, fat will solidify on the top, and then I can skim that right off. Oh, let's check out, let's check out our yield on our broth, huh? According to the graduations on this pot, we got just under six quarts of broth. It's supposed to make eight servings. Yeah, makes eight servings, cool. We got about six quarts of broth. Each serving is probably just under one pint. So we actually got quite a bit of yield here. I'm curious to see what this tastes like. So this is a pretty homestyle recipe, so we're gonna do some homestyle noodles. Mix, mix. No, 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 no. Okay, 
Basically here I'm taking the sobro and then mashing it all together to create my noodle dough and then pressing that dough with my KitchenAid mixer. I kind of forgot how much I hated working with this KitchenAid mixer but honestly I was getting through it. I do in fact own a much better noodle machine, but I didn't want to break it out for this home style dish. Once I got my noodles to the correct width, I went ahead and started cutting. I really thought that I could use a sashimi style technique to get through this pork chashu, but it was so flaky tender and so wobbly. I had to use a hot knife and just work it back and forth like a hot knife cutting a multi-layered stick of butter I guess. This chashu was so tender. Though it wasn't in the Just One Cookbook's recipe, I added some ramen eggs, some soy sauce, some mirin, some water, and four six-minute eggs. The six minutes means from room temperature so they came out to a perfect soft boiled consistency. After a couple hours, they're marinated and I cut the eggs with my little cutter named Chomper. 